Hello, hello, hello again! I'm Philip Magnus, back with some more of the excellent, exceptional Banner Saga 2. And we're getting straight into the action from where we left off last time. The rain finally ceases, but the wind picks up. You squint into the gusts and have a clear view of the vast plains ahead. There doesn't seem to be much out there, Ivor says. His tone conveys wonder and concern in equal measure. Well, consider Ivor concerned, I will do that. Let's see, there's a little tiny Grinder town. Oh god, our morale is bad. Uh oh. The ground shakes again, enough to cause the yoks to strain at their le leads in panic. Out here in the plains, with nothing but open sky above, you feel remarkably vulnerable. Only a few trees around the new mountains, Hakon says in a wry tone. Looks like we only have to worry about the crown opening up beneath us. He shrugs at the look you give him. Well, he knows how to reassure. almost looks forgotten by the rest of the world. Maybe those who live here have forgotten the rest of us too. Cool. In a field just outside of Grunda, the caravan spots several creatures you assumed were myth. I don't believe it. Outdoors. Two horseborn hold simple bronze weapons and stand guard over a few others who look wounded, unable to rise. The size of the caravan makes them nervous. I have to get a closer look. Me too. The two of you advance a hundred yards, showing every sign of respect and peace. A number of clansmen push closer too. The male horseborn stomps a hoof repeatedly. Oh my god, look at this artwork. He is gorgeous, and so is she. The female, tail whipping, brandishes a javelin. Damn. The caravan is scaring them. Go tell the archers to put down their bows. Yeah, let's do that. Olive looks irritated at having to leave the horseborn, but she does what you say. You slowly advance and point. My name is Alette. Your friends look hurt. The two standing horseborn exchange a look, the female snorting and shaking her mane. You help? His voice sounds strained, and his mouth moves uncomfortably around the foreign words. Yes, help. You wave to Ivind, who approaches slowly, but confidently. The female looks agitated and speaks in a long stream of consonants. The male responds to her, then turns to you. Help, Roech and others. I'll try. This is certainly a first. The standing horseborn step aside, allowing Ivan to approach the wounded fighters. Now we're helping centaurs, or however their name is. Spelled in this weird land, with Ivan and June attending to the wounded Roech and other horseborn. The caravan settles down outside the scant town of Grunda. It appears the town is enjoying a small festival. Huh. Never as good a time to enjoy a small festival as when the world is ending. Quite a few clansmen go over the hill to enjoy the sights and sounds, but soon return, looking disappointed. They called us outsiders, a woman says. They don't want us interrupting their wet f harvesting festival. But the merchants don't seem to mind trading. The clansmen soon shrug it off and take renewed interest in the horseborn. Some in awe, others in disgust. Ew, the disgusted ones. Oh, look. Weak caravan morale causes a minus one willpower penalty in battle. Battle. Maintain sufficient supplies and rest in camp to improve morale. Let's see then. We shall talk with the Horseborn. Tank! You glance at Ubin, who snorts and smiles. Sk! 
Lucas is thanking you for helping his friends. Friend, Rebecca. Deirdre is the other one, but she's not in a talking with Val and Human's mood. You are welcome. I'd like you to meet Hacken. Scotch tails was his flanks and he bows his head towards Hacken. Val, men's same hud. No, but we're no longer enemies. I haven't seen Horsborn in centuries. Last day, you humans and Val were at each other's throats. What brings you so far? No, what happened to Re Roek? How do you know our language? How do you know our language? Skatchak just stares at you. Ah. <sighs> You talk like us? Where did you learn? I don't know what I'm doing with his voice. Hud. Little trade wit. Man's in mud. I think he... <clears throat> I think he means our book friends. The Cragsmen. Oh. Well, what happened to Roek? Roek. Brave fighter. Protect food. Hit many things. Hit? Who was attacking? Ah, uh, Skatak says many things in his other language. Ah, uh, Trigekantai? His eyes go wide and he stomps the ground before pointing west. You look at Ubin. Hmm. I don't have a clue, but clearly not a friend. Was it the people here? Here in Grunda? Skatach... Skatak looks where Hakan is pointing. I feel like I've read this guy's name five different ways so far. He shakes his head and points west again. The Val King eyes Katak suspiciously. The Val King's eyes... Uh, yeah, I already read that. What brings you so far? No, not. Skatak looks confused by the question, so Ubin shows him the map, pointing to Dalalond and Grundar. Food. Our planes. Break. Hakan snorts. Might be justice. Didn't they kill all the horses? Scrivener. His ancestors did, yes. But blaming folks for things that happened. Hundreds of years ago? Before they were alive as well? You may as well accuse these humans around us of starting the Great Wars. Have you found the food you were seeking? Enough for time, I guess. Two others are uh, take the heart and so His hooves scum the ground during certain words. Just these two? What about you and the couple? Skatak, Roek, Derdre, you stay. This heart help. We help this heart. Thank you. Skatak nods in the movement that he uses most of his upper body. Man, Val, Horsborn. Same heart. Funny. Ubin chuckles and you smile while Hakan shakes his head and walks away. Well, this was certainly an entertaining conversation. Oh, let's talk with Mogun, was it? Uh, the blonde axeman, one of two twins from a small village near Skogre, is chopping into a fallen tree for no apparent reason. He's probably frustrated. His swings look dangerous. Hogan, everything okay? He glares at you. Where's your brother, Morgan? He left with the ravens. Wondering if I should have done the same. Why is that? I followed your father a long way, and now you. And for what? My brother's gone. My wife and children are frightened of everything around them, including me. I'll tell them this constant fighting is only for a time, but it's changing me. I see it in their eyes, in my own reflection. I thought I was doing it to protect them, but if they think I'm a monster, what's the point? Um, 
They'll appreciate what you are doing someday. I don't know. My wife said she needs a man who will hold her more than his axe. I think she might leave me. I'm not really sure where she'd go, but that's none of my business. Just tell me this caravan would fall apart without me fighting in the shield wall, and I'll stay armed. Um, encourage him to keep fighting. He's a good warrior. I need him. We need to keep everyone safe, not just your family, but all the families. Make things right with your wife and kids in Arberang. The Axeman looks somewhat relieved, even not a bit guilty. A few more fights then. You know, I had my doubts about following you back in Borsgart. But you're right, all right, Alette. Oh, such a nice heart to heart. I think we'll take a day of rest. What's going on here, by the way? All this yellow, it's very bright, but also kind of weird. We eat. Market. Let's see. Um, protects from death unless strength is one. That's cool. Yoks notes from the box breeding grounds in Nord Malt. Yoks notes carry weight and clout. That's nice. And the Irvin Ancient Horseborn Warlord focuses the wearer's fury. Cool. Not bad at all. Let's take this one. Hmm. Yes. Maybe might be a bit risky, considering I don't have all that much in the way of renown. But hey. Oh god, someone is knocking around with a hammer next door. Um, well, come on in and let's have a look at you, Sven the trainer says. Um, what can you show me? Plenty, try to keep up, let's let that, yeah. Okay, so he doesn't really have anything to teach me, does he? No? Rest, let's do a few days of resting. Cool, normal morale, that's good. Do we have enough to hmm, upgrade anyone? Anyone at all? Oh, these are good. These three, I'm looking forward to trying them out in the battlefield. Can I, for example, upgrade this guy? Uh, yes, I can. Do I want to? Not sure. Maybe I should upgrade someone who is level 5, like this guy. Can I? Uh, no. I'm short on renown. Whoops, wrong button. Okay, let us move on. I have 18 days worth of supplies. I think I would like to buy... <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to buy two days worth of supplies. Just for the fun of it all. Again, don't use escape, guys. It will not work. I have still more damaged characters, but I think I've stayed enough in this village as is. Any last piece of equipment? Um, this is kind of good. I think I'm going to take it. It's not the most useful thing, but... Hey. It actually isn't all that bad either. Let's move. I spent all my renown, so... Not perfect. Now that Rex had a chance to heal, two of the horseborn are heading south to deliver some supplies to their people. What crazy ideas in your head, Scrivener? With the world falling apart around us, there may not be another chance to track down south. Um, listen to yourself, the world is breaking. Everyone's free to do what they want, but you'll be missed. I'll say... Remember that when it comes to dealing with Ruga as well. If he wants to depart, by the gods let him. You taking your hired muscle with you? Uh... I'd feel better if Gunnulf stayed with all of you. 
That blade of his is sure to attract the wrong kind of attention. Ho <laughs> ho, wrong attention might find you anyway. Then who will protect you? I'm old. Not an idiot. I've learned a few tricks to keep my head on my shoulders. The younger Val shrugs and walks off to find food. He's the most stylish Val of all of them. Look at that handsome, beautiful green. Just like mine. Ha! <sighs> then be safe, Ubin. You join us again if you can. You know where we are going. Don't worry about me. Just make sure you're alive to see this thing through to Harberang. Farewell. Scrivener says a few more goodbyes before departing with the horse born. So nice, very nice, absolutely nice. Hmm. Okay. Morale again declines. Oh! What's happening now? The governor catches up to you and asks for a moment of your time. His bodyguard is beside him, silent. Hmm. It's not getting any easier, is it? It probably won't get easier until we get to Arborang. Quit fooling yourself, girl. The capital is going to be a different battlefield. But a battlefield nonetheless. Then I'll fight whoever gets in our way. Good. In order for that to happen, we need to do something about these soft peasants. What should we be doing with them? Training fighters. Making the decision to leave weak members behind. Arrive in Arberang as a hardened army. You sound like Bulwark. That Val knows how to survive and keep others around him alive. It's why I originally hired him. I'll consider what you've said. The governor is about to react, but calms himself. Get us across this wasteland and try not picking up any more strays, will you? He sneers in the direction of the horseborn before leaving you. What a nasty and pleasant governor man. Oh, I'm looking forward to the moment when he unfortunately bites the dust. Look at the beauty of it all. I'm really curious about these plants, these foresty thingies. Trees! Yes, that's the word. Oh, the music is really good right now. A few of the weavers have been smiling more than usual lately, and now you know why. Leo leads children out from behind the cart in new costumes. Some have horns on headbands, while one red-headed girl wears a green cloak like yours. A boy wearing a red cloak is carrying an axe. Oh, that, that's right in the fields. She, the boy's like my dad! The entire caravan gathers around to watch the performance. The young actors stand behind a short wall and discuss an approaching dredge army. As a black cloth rolls across the ground in front of the actors, a young man in red armor stands up and shouts, Below her! This is a reenactment re of the Battle of Beauregard. Beauregard. A dark-haired girl holding a spear says, We'll get no help from the governor. We're on our own. A few people in the crowd laugh while Ruggas stares at the skull. The young Rook, Alette and Val run towards the fierce below her. Attacking and being repelled, finally the girl dressed as Jinu hands Rook a silver arrow. Rook hugs Alette and shoots the arrow. Bellower roars. Stand and watch the ending. Bellower grabs Rook by the throat and growls. You sense heads in the crowd turning towards you when Aleo and the weaver suddenly snap the caravan's banner in front of the scene like a curtain. As the banner lowers, the young version of you cradles the boy dressed as your father. The other actors stand in a semicircle around you and begin singing a familiar tune. The crowd joins in and an impromptu line forms with everyone walking by to lay a hand on your shoulder. Wow, that was strangely emotional. I'm getting just a tiny bit tear-eyed. Huh, unusual. 
A group of two dozen humans thin and dirty step off the roof, rough path to let the caravan pass. Please, a young girl says. Anything to eat? Her mother, eyes averted, pulls the girl by the arm to silence her. Why, why are you all out here? The homes were burned, the man says, scuffing. Cowards didn't even show a banner. Now we are just trying to get somewhere safe to start over. Let's do the foolishly trusting thing and have the ruggedy people join us, shall we? Worried glances are exchanged among the group until a man says, Better than us starving out here on our own. They all tend to agree and thank you, joining the rear of the caravan. I hope we put guards to watch them. I mean, so much of the game could be, you know, um, taken care of if we just use logic. Ahead, the caravan comes to an immediate halt. Now the second fine shoe this bloody beast has thrown in a day, the yok tender curses. It will take some time to see to the yok, so you call for camp. While most of the clansmen sleep or lose themselves in drink, Juno requests... How do we even have drink? Bloody hell! I mean, the last time we got drink was in the Banner Saga 1, when that mad Val saved all the drinking, and uh, how the hell do we still have drink? Um, Juno requests a moment to speak with you alone. I'm impressed so far that you've managed to keep your composure through tough situations. Thank you. Not to pain you with further comparison, but you remind me of your father at the Godstone of Straths. Determined. What actually happened there? Your father faced down his fears, walking through thousands of dredge to obtain the only weapon that could bring down Beloa. That's incredible and frightening. I don't know if I could do something like that. The Valka gives you a maternal smile. Neither did he. Juno patiently awaits your reply. Um, tell me his death meant something. I can't do that. Rook's death was unfortunate. But his life... His life was very important. The people he brought here from Skogger, including you, and all the others along the way are being forged into what the future will require. The previous era of peace is over, and one of survival has begun. Arberang may be the best shelter for the coming storm, but the people there are soft, too dependent on a society that will no longer exist. Because of the dredge? Partially, but mostly because of the coming darkness that is pushing the dredge. Hmm. You keep talking about darkness, but no one has ever seen it. You've seen the signs of its coming? Dredging numbers? The land breaking apart? Hell, even that gigantic serpent that is awakened when it's not supposed to is a force unlike any other. I wish I could say more. But even the Mende Council is ignorant to this. Um, why me? Couldn't others? No, I don't understand. Uh, thank you, I should... No, let's go with I don't understand how you got involved in all of this. At times I think this is all my fault. At others, I'm not sure I could have stopped it. She sees your wide-eyed expression and attempts to clarify. How I became involved is confusing at best. But you and I share something in common. We are both learning that we have to do as we go. But only the future will tell if my role is villain or hero. Why me? Couldn't others learn to lead the caravan? The straight answer is yes, others could do it. But the clansmen chose to follow you under that banner. If you didn't appear worthy, you would be replaced. That doesn't sound like I have much say in the matter. Ah, oh. Quite the contrary. Your every decision is your say in the matter. You keep all of these people alive as best as you can. As if they were all from your own clan. That is rare and needed. 
Thank you. I should get back to helping the others. Before you go, there is one thing I must address with you. The serpent. I knew it. I mentioned him. I was certain. The government Ormsdal. Ormsdalr. And the tremors in the ground concern me a great deal. Yeah, me too. Should that incredible creature ever surface, do not attempt to stop it. It will take power unseen in ages to affect the serpent. If you see it, run. Her words chill you as you find yourself nodding to her command. I call for the serpent to be a part of our caravan, 2016. Do we have anything we could use? Like maybe some extra renown. I think I wanted to do this here thing. Forge ahead. Cool. War leader uses his experience in battle to use. She commands the allies, moving them next in line in initiative. Cool. Very, very cool. Let's go with... Hmm. No, not breaking shields. Let's put a few shields on him. That high amount of strength needs to be better shielded. Look at how many people he's killed. This guy is a monster. I think he's probably killed... No, actually not. But he's killed plenty enough as is. What's that item? Uh, da -da 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 -da, yeah, cool. Let's put... What? It has a very specific... Huh, curious. Why can't anyone else get it? Interesting, interesting. What is your item, woman? Okay, we are not going to find out like this, so let's just continue onward. Some item management is needed, I think I'll do that when the camera isn't trolling. <laughs> Day 40. We still haven't met anyone to murder. That makes me happy. A woman holds a young girl in front of you and a crowd of others. Call her stealing enough food to feed a starving Val, the woman says. Not the first time I've seen her at it either. The girl looks familiar. She's part of a thin group of humans you picked up on the trail. Why were you stealing? Never know when you'll get rid of us, the girl says. People always get rid of us. Her mother bursts through the crowd. Stupid girl, these people were good to us, she says, but it's too late. Drifters! Come the angry shouts from the clansmen. Drifters are people without a banner. They are blamed for all sorts of woes. Mostly undeserved. The Val and clansmen alike run them off before you can make sense of it at all. But you are left wondering what will become of them. Ah... Uh. So I chose the wrong action in questioning the girl. I should have just forced her to return the food and her people to punish her. But hey, I couldn't know. I couldn't have known. You notice the archer knit because she is standing perfectly still, looking out into the distance. Let me guess, you see more grass. When she turns to you, she's not smiling. Dredge, she says quietly. How is that possible? You ask, knowing better than to doubt her sight. I thought we lost them at the chasm. You can make out a dust cloud on the horizon, which means they can make out the one produced by the caravan. And it's heading the same direction as you, towards Lunda. Oh, come on! <sighs> the Valka walks to your side and says, I was afraid of this. The crack is in the ground along the eastway road. It's like that damn crevice at Seahorn. Oops. Does that mean they could... Juno finishes your question. Appear almost anywhere? Yes. But let's not panic the caravan. Just keep moving. Okay, that's what we'll do. If you say keep moving, who am I to disagree? Lunter, the archer's haven. Home to the finest fletchers in the world. Though it appears beset with war. So it appears beset which war. I wish I could speak in her accent when I read her lines. It's such an amazing accent. I'll probably spend a year trying to do it and fail miserably. <sighs> oh my, this is not looking good. Horseborn, why are they attacking? That came out a lot more masculine than it should have. 
so I guess we have a new enemy then. And I also suspect that the three horsemen we have in our party won't be too happy fighting against the horseborn. Looks like Dre Dredger hitting the town too. Damn. We had a few days of calm, and now, now the storm is really going to get nasty. So sweat, this is bad. So sweat, really? Lunda's fighting on two fronts and barely holding it together. Hakan's been warring long before you were ever born. His worried look is unsettling. I always heard the Horseborn had trouble with the walls since they usually fight in open fields. He says, Ubin's the only one old enough to actually know. But it doesn't really matter, because those walls will barely slow the dredge. If those dredge flatten this town, we're defenceless out on these plains. But what are the holes born after? Our all eyes turn to Roik, Derdru and Skatak. The three horse born in your caravan are pointing and talking exactly in their own language. Derdru nods towards Roik, tossing her head and baring her teeth. You're surprised by the look of savage fury on their faces as they blah blah blah, i sorry. While Skatak remains behind, he clearly wants to join them, but he awaits your orders. They could die on their own, Odliff shouts, not hesitating to follow Roik and Dertri. Our size. She's lost her mind over those new members of the clan. Might lose her life for it too. He looks at her. We could fight Dredge or Horseborn, or split up and fight both if you're feeling suicidal. If we're splitting up, my Vala hitting the Dredge, Hakan says, we are good at that. Ingvar can do what he wants. He always has. You consider your options. Um, let's see. Skatak, why did they take off like that? Skatak bites his lips and flips his mane left and right. Return! Fight! He is either nervous and hiding something or cannot find the right words. Hacken spits. We don't have time to figure out his thumbs and tail whipping! Um, let's stop the horseborn and deal with the dredge later. This might be a very bad decision, S but I do not want to risk Odliff, and I don't want to risk splitting up either. So we'll take off the threat, which maybe, just maybe, we could negotiate our way out of, and then we're going to try and save the town from the dredge. That's the plan. Though the horse born are much faster, you and the whole others follow Roik and Der Drew against this unfamiliar four. It looks like the force you trained is roughly the size of the enemies. This could go either way, but the victory here will protect most of your clansmen. Only if he's hemmed in near to horse born, you assume are Roik and Der Drew. But a kicked up dust cloud blurs your sight. We can drive a wedge straight for her, Ever says. But these horseborn are fast. If they flank us, we'll take heavy losses. Um we have to save Oddleaf and the others. This could take a lot more victims, but I'll risk. We are saving our clansmen. I have a shout for a wedge formation and everyone charges towards Oddleaf and the two horseborn. Let's do this! 